Welcome folks to Jimmy Has Problems. Today we're tackling the problem of becoming a developer. It's really tricky. And further, keeping your skills up as a developer. These are both really hard questions to tackle. And software development is this huge, enormous field. I mean, I went to school for software and I came out and I still needed to learn a ton. So I had to kind of cobble together this crash course with help from coworkers and my manager. And what roadmap.sh does is it kind of creates a community where the roadmaps of becoming, you know, a QA analyst or an AI and data scientist or a front end developer are already kind of laid out. So one, I just want to note the UI here is really beautiful. All of these like interactions are really nice. I'm really impressed with what they have built it with. It looks really good. Now it does look like the Y Combinator. So there's some degree of cookie cutterness, but I like it. So, um, all right, let's look at the one of the roadmaps. So this is software design and architecture. It's a step by step guide to learn software design architecture. So this is a lot, right? It is all kinds of ways of tackling this. So you're going to start with I'm trying to even make sure I understand this. So it looks like I'm not sure kind of I think this is the roadmap as you move down this way. I'm not sure what these, oh, I see. So this is like a table of contents and then, and that's the order. And then you're kind of learning things through. I, I really find this interesting. I think, let me just look real quick. So clean code, program paradigms. I'm just seeing if I agree with this. I think that makes sense. Yeah. I'm curious what they have for enterprise patterns. Okay. Repositories, yep. DTOs, uh, entities. This is interesting. That's tricky. I don't really understand how to do that myself. Architecture patterns, so I'm, I'm working through a book called The System Design Interview that is walking through some of these in some really interesting ways, especially when it comes to message queuing and, and the like. This is still stuff that I don't understand, the microkernel. There's a lot here. So it's really in-depth. I think the idea is, oh, you can track progress. That's pretty cool. So you can update progress. Interesting. Wow, okay. I love the idea of like seeing my actual progress. I often use textbooks for this because of the fact that you get to see it. Oh, they have references. This is really cool. Wow, I am going to bookmark this. Really interesting stuff. So, all right, let's go back to the high level. So this is solving the problem of figuring out how to become a better software developer or QA person or whatever. And I think it's a really interesting approach Let's click into one of these and see what it looks like. What is this actually doing? All right. So this is less cool than I thought. I would have hoped that was more, you know, in depth. Okay. There's a little bit more here. So this is very much like self-driven. I think it's a good idea. I think sometimes you to me and the like do a little bit too much handholding. This is probably too little handholding, but really interesting, really well done. And if that was all you're into, just understanding how this works, go ahead and take off. Thank you. But I'm going to do kind of a deep dive into the person who made it and talk a little bit about just other products that I found that were similar. So let's dive into the author. So this is the GitHub repository backing that website. I love that it's open source. It's super interesting. I love how many issues and pull requests there are. It's kind of Funny, I don't even, what is a dice game? Um, interesting. Not sure why they're doing that for, oh, for front end roadmap. Oh, that's a good idea. So you can like propose projects and there's this new feature for projects that they're coming out with, which I think is a step towards a more robust kind of setup here for learning. That's not just read this article, but you can see they've got a lot of pull requests. This is really cool. I think it's a really smart project. Now, the person who created it, um, I think it's Kamran Ahmed, he has done two other projects that I found really well designed. I'm really impressed with the design here of time.fyi. So these are time related tools to help you stay productive and organized. I am just going to click into this one and let's see what it looks like. Wow. Yeah. The design is really pretty beautiful here. I didn't know they had a daily planner. This is really well done. You can tell that this person really understands flex boxes because everything is really well aligned. 
And I am willing to bet if I move this around, you get to see my OBS software, then it is going to adapt really well. And it did. So really impressive too, that they have, you know, a login and a non-login feature. And I love seeing this is so wild. Very interesting. Wow. Well done. And then they also have driver.js, which is a helpful. I don't, I've never seen anything like this where it helps you. Sorry, this is the wrong link. Uh, highlight different features on a page, right? So I've seen this kind of in newsletters where they highlight, you know, the sign up feature. I think Substack does this, but I've never seen it kind of as a way to navigate around a page. And I really kind of dig it. I think I'm probably going to mess with this at some point in the future. So this creator, this software developer is doing some really cool stuff. Roadmap.sh is work in progress, but I think promising and interesting. These two are, are really fascinating. I think this time zone one I'll probably end up using just because I have lots of friends that are in different time zones. But so kudos to them. Let's talk a little bit about just some other things that are out there. So I'm using exit.ai. Shout out to them to find similar products. This is road mapping for products. So a little bit different than trying to learn stuff, more about an actual project roadmap. And I love these. So one of my favorite um, sites and tools, I no longer use it, but it'll always be, have a special place in my heart. It's called Obsidian. And they have a roadmap somewhere in here that maybe I will not be able to find. There's their roadmap. So this product, uh, canny, or I guess product road it is, is a way to look at what folks are working on. And again, notice the design. This is something I aspire to, uh, probably I have lots to learn on the front end, is really, this is beautiful to me. I know maybe it's not the greatest for everyone else, but. I love the the way this looks and the fact that they've got it laid out. This is a great example of really taking pride in every little detail, even if it's a product roadmap that not many people look at. So hats off to Obsidian. But I love the idea of product roadmaps. I think it's a really great way to organize things and get people excited about what's coming. Just in the same way that roadmaps.sh helps you kind of get excited and feel like you're making progress towards becoming a better developer. Now, this is, of course, the AI version of it. So if this one allows you to publish a roadmap that you made, this one generates a roadmap with AI. Really curious if this one works. Unfortunately, you have to request the demo, which is annoying to me. I guess, oh, wow. Okay, this is a, maybe a little bit different. It takes in all these project sources, and it has a project. That, this is interesting, actually. This is better than I thought it would be. I thought it was just going to say, like, I want to make an app, and it would spit out a bogus roadmap. But really interesting to have someone constantly looking at what you're doing. I'm not sure about ROI analysis. I think that's sketchy to me. It's predicting the future in some ways that probably don't quite make sense. But this is pretty cool. They've done a lot of work to integrate across a lot of softwares. I think this is really smart, though. We have a lot of structured data now in these project management tools, and AI can use it, and, and we can really start to integrate. I feel like Zapier was kind of the first step here where it allowed you to connect different tools together, and now we're going to see this AI layered on top of those connections, and I think it's actually pretty cool. So... This uh, is really interesting. It's called shipped.club. This is, I think, in some ways, kind of a departure from roadmaps.sh, where roadmaps.sh, I feel like, is about learning all the steps that go into creating a great startup. This one is trying to abstract it away. It's a little bit like no code, but I like it better than no code. So I, I have trouble with no code because I think it puts you in a bad place. I was previously a consultant, and we would often have these projects where a big enterprise tried to use a no-code tool and then brought it to us to, to productionalize it. And we ended up having to throw away almost all the no-code, right? Because it's not built well or it's difficult to edit or it has bad patterns. 
I think that something like this, where it's building off of something like Next.js, is much more promising because it's something you can actually work with. It's making assumptions about the technical tools you want rather than kind of hiding them. And this reminds me a little bit of Ruby on Rails. So I think this is really interesting. It's kind of cool that it has payment, UI kit, ORM, and authentication email built in. Like that, that's a lot. This is really great. So setting up landing pages, this is something I might end up using. So kind of on the other end of the spectrum, instead of learning all the nitty gritty, this is just jumping in with some templates. But like I said, I think it's better than no code for jumping in. So, all right. Well, thank you so much, folks. I was really impressed by this product, roadmaps.sh, this week. And the person behind it has done some really cool stuff. So I hope you give it a look and let me know if you find it helpful.